Millions of people around the world, including myself, love the game of golf. But there's a group of people out there that just can't enjoy the game like the rest of us. With the help of the Human Centered Design Studio at the Colorado School of Mines and Bob Radosi from TRS Prosthetics in Boulder, Colorado, our group has worked hard to provide a solution for arm and hand amputees to be able to play golf comfortably and just have fun while doing it. Sure, I'm uh, Bob Radosi and I'm the Executive Vice President of Phil Hour TRS Incorporated. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I, I was kind of lucky in some ways. I, I, when I was in, in, in your age range, I was in a net car accident and I lost my hand. I grew up in the 50s, however, and I got to experience lots of different kinds of sports. So when I was a kid, I played baseball and football and all those things in neighborhood and in schools. So I, I had a, a pretty good understanding by the time I was 22 of what it felt like to do swing a baseball bat, handle a hockey stick, handle basketballs and soccer balls. So after I lost my hand, I think it gave me the, the advantage, so to speak, of having already done all those things. So when I started to design devices, I knew what my expectations should be. TRS's original design for the Helix was more focused on other sports such as lacrosse or hockey, but it fell short in its design application for the game of golf. When we were first designing the Helix, it was difficult to recreate the complex geometries of Bob's original Helix. Originally, we wanted to incorporate a boa so that I can cinch onto the golf club and have a more secured grip on the club. Unfortunately, the boa requires a closed loop system for it to properly function, and the complex geometry of the helix only allows for an open loop system, uh, therefore compromising the design of the boa. With our sixth iteration of the golf helix, which was one we felt pretty confident about, we invited Bob to come down and test it at the Varsity Golf Studio. And we, we were excited at first because things were working pretty well, but then we noticed that there was a tear in the helix, which Looking long term would not be a very good thing for durability of the product. To, uh, we wanted to address this issue and so we decided to run a SolidWorks uh, finite element analysis. We were able to find some data from a study about the forces involved in the hand during a golf swing and then we used those in our estimations with the simulation. Doing this, we were able to produce results that happened to match our physical testing almost directly. There were stress concentrations exactly where those tears occurred and which helped us to really figure out how we could uh, address those issues and move forward towards a better Helix. Through a few more iterations, we got to our eighth iteration of the Helix, which we re-ran that study again using the same exact forces, and we were able to find much better results with not, not, not very many stress concentrations. This was something we were really excited about and made us feel a lot more confident when we moved forward with printing and further testing with Bob. We are finally ready to unveil our finished product, our high fidelity prototype. This is the Golf Helix V8. Absolutely, yeah, we've gone from a product or, or concept that wasn't working uh, in, in a prototype to one that is now working functionally, at least satisfactorily enough in my mind that uh, it's, it's, I, I believe we can make this work. Uh, it'll perform right. We've got the right angle of incidence of holding the club, uh, the comfort level, it's not bulk, too bulky, I can get my hand around it and around the club. Uh, it feels reasonably good for, for getting an overgrasp on, which this requires. Uh, and it's got the flexibility. It seems to be replicating the kind of biomechanical motions that I need to effectively swing a, a golf club.